Hey guys, I'm Janelle, and I'm going to show you how to find a derivative using the limit definition, or as some people call it, the limit process. Finding the derivative of a function can be a little tricky, depending on the types of functions you're dealing with. I'm going to show you how to do it for polynomial functions, rational functions, and radical functions. If you want to do it for another kind of function, like a trig function or exponential function, or if you want to use a shortcut like the product rule or chain rule, those are different videos. <laughs> So when you're finding the derivative using the limit process, it's all about perseverance. These problems aren't necessarily hard math to do. It's really algebra you've probably already done, but maybe a bit more of it. It's going to test your stamina, but I promise you just need to stick with it. So let's do it. So if you have a function, you can define the derivative of that function with this limit. This is the limit definition of the derivative. I swear I didn't make this up. There's a lot to say about where it comes from, but right now I'm just going to show you how to use it. I know it may look overwhelming, but we'll take it step by step and it'll start to make sense. The basic idea is we'll take the limit definition of a derivative and we'll rewrite it with the function we want the derivative for. We'll then try and define that limit and the result is a derivative. Okay, first I'll show you how to do it with a polynomial. Here's a polynomial function, and here's the limit definition of the derivative, which is always the same. Remember, the goal is to rewrite this using this. So, how? <laughs> when you see a polynomial, a really good strategy is to build this equation up in three parts. It's going to get kind of big, but that doesn't mean it's harder. It's just bigger. So we'll start by finding f of x plus h by plugging x plus h in for x into the function. Now for negative f of x, we'll just subtract the original function. I think it's really helpful to put everything from the function into parentheses here, so that you distribute the negative to all the terms. It's a super easy mistake to just subtract the first term, and it'll be hard to catch later. And this is all over h. So you may remember from finding limits that if we just plug 0 in for h, we're done. We've found the limit. For using the definition of the derivative, that's not going to work because we'll end up dividing by zero when we put a zero in the denominator. So the next step is to try and simplify and reduce to fix that h in the denominator. To help with canceling out terms, first we'll have to expand and distribute everything. As you can see, I have foiled, distributed the 3, and distributed the negative to everything that's in the parentheses on the end. Okay, so looking at this, there's a lot I can start canceling out. And that's good because I'd be unhappy if there wasn't. And happy Janelle is better for everybody. Okay, it's reduced and not looking so crazy anymore. See how there are h's in every term? That's great. We can factor it out and get rid of this h in the denominator. When you're finding the derivative using the limit definition, factoring out an h in the numerator is going to come up a lot as a way to cancel the h in the denominator. So I'll factor out the h and cancel it away. Finally, with no h in the denominator, I can try direct substitution, which because the limit is as h approaches 0, means just putting 0 in for h. So the derivative is f prime of x equals 2x plus 3. Don't be scared that there's still an x in here. The result is a function. That's because the derivative represents the instantaneous rate of change for a point from the original function and how much it's changing can be different at every point. So that's how this works for polynomials. And I wish that was all you needed to know, but of course there are other types of functions. Now I'll show you how to do it for rational functions. So 
So here's a function and I see fractions. You might see a rational function and think it's going to be a lot harder to find the derivative, but you can totally do this with the limit process. I'm going to start by doing what I did before, rewriting the limit definition of a derivative with the function we want the derivative for, and we'll figure it out from there. So I rewrote the limit definition using the function. To do that, I plugged x plus h in for x into the original function, subtracted off the original function, and divided it all by h. Okay, this is a mess, but we can clean up the mess in pieces. Where might be a good place to start? There are two fractions in the numerator. I don't like that, and you probably don't like that, right? So a good place to start might be to find a common denominator for those fractions. Because of how the limit definition works, if you start with a function with fractions, you're usually going to need to find a common denominator. So you can see it, this is just a quick reminder about how to find the common denominator. The common denominator needs all the unique pieces of both denominators, including the two, the x, and the x plus h. The first fraction is missing the x, and the second fraction is missing the x plus h. So multiply the whole fraction by the part that it's missing. Now that the fractions have a common denominator, I'll put them back into the whole mess and combine them. Now the fractions have been combined and x has started canceling out. That's always a good sign, but what now? This is still a complex fraction and that's not good. Now seems like the right time to get rid of the h on the bottom, but how do you do that? Multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. Again, if you start with a function that has a fraction, it's pretty likely you end up multiplying by the reciprocal to get rid of the h in the denominator at some point. I multiply by the reciprocal, and I just want to point out I got negative 1 in the numerator. It's really easy to forget negatives like that, so be careful. Now this is looking kind of okay. And remember, the goal is to get to the point where direct substitution is going to work. Once you get to the point where the denominator isn't just h, it's a good time to try direct substitution. I put 0 in for h, and with a little simplifying, we're there. So for the original function, f of x equals 1 over 2x, the instantaneous rate of change, or derivative, is f prime of x equals negative 1 over 2x squared. So the two real tricks for rational functions were really just finding a common denominator for the fractions in the numerator, and multiplying by the reciprocal to get rid of the h in the denominator. Okay. So I want to show you one more thing that comes up, radical functions. So here's a function with a radical. If you're trying to find the derivative with the limit process, where do you start on something like this? Just like the other ones, I'm going to start by rewriting the limit definition of a derivative with the function we want the derivative for. So I substituted in x plus h for x, subtracted off the original function, and divided it all by h. Now I have to figure out a way to simplify this when there are these square roots. The trick to try when you see a radical is multiplying by the conjugate. For this, we want to multiply by the conjugate of the numerator. You'll see why in a second. If you forgot everything about a conjugate, I'll show you quickly how it works. The conjugate is the same binomial, except the sign in the middle of the terms is flipped. Use the FOIL method to multiply it out. What's nice is with a conjugate, the middle terms always cancel out. 
Also, when multiplying a radical by itself, the radical goes away and you're just left with a radicand. Okay, back to finding the derivative. When I multiplied by the conjugate, I didn't multiply out the denominator. Remember, the goal is to get rid of the h in the denominator that screws up direct substitution. A lot of the time that's easier if you don't multiply out the denominator because we're looking for a way to cancel it out. And after I distributed and simplified, there's a way to cancel the h. So it's starting to look like direct substitution is going to work again. Let's try plugging 0 in for h and get this done. And after substituting 0 in for h and a little simplifying, we have the derivative, which is f prime of x equals 2 over the square root of x. So remember, if you're trying to find the derivative for a radical function, a good thing to try is multiplying by the conjugate. I really hope this helped you understand how to find a derivative using the limit definition. It can be a mess, but if you push through the mess, you can find the derivative. I know it's a lot to wrap your head around, but remember, you don't have to like math. But you can like my video, so if you did, please like and subscribe.